good morning, my viewers. Thank you for tuning in again this morning. It's another beautiful Sunday morning, and God has been very gracious unto us and has blessed us through another week since we last met in this fashion. I trust you all had a very beautiful week and that you're enjoying the beautiful um, weather and God's beautiful world. It is a lovely time of the year when things cool down, especially here in Cayman Islands, and we enjoy the atmosphere. I've been enjoying beautiful mornings, especially out in my garden and um, observing the lovely plants and flowers and enjoying that fresh morning breeze. So enjoy life and enjoy our surrounding. So again, we are engaged in the study of God's word. And I trust that this lesson this morning will be of a very deep heart searching uh, to you and to all of us as we are studying on the subject of um, sin, man's greatest enemy. And today's lesson, we are looking at the origin of sin. In other words, the beginning of sin. And sin has really made a grave downfall in the life of humanity over the years and continue to do so. And it will continue to do so if each one of us don't do our part to eliminate it from our lives. So for us to have a sinless world, everyone would need to come to know the Lord and the, there's the Lord God as their personal Savior. So let us see what we can gather from this lesson this morning. Let us have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for bringing us into this another beautiful Sunday morning. We thank you for your blessings another week. Thank you for all the good things that we enjoy around us, dear Lord. And we know that not all things are pleasant at times, but in it all and through it all, you have been there for us. And we thank you for bringing us out in all our trials and obstacles in life, dear Lord. We have you that we can lean to or lean on. We have you that we can come to with our problems and you are there to see us through. So Lord, I pray that you will bless our hearts this morning as we study your word. Be with each one, everyone that is listening, viewing their Lord. I pray that you will cover them with your love and with your blood and help them to feel your presence, dear Lord, and feel the love that you have for them and understand the beautiful world that you have created for us to live in and for us to give back to you our worship, dear Lord. So bless us now as we study your word. In Jesus' name, amen. The origin of sin, that's our topic this morning. And the aim of the lesson is to show that sin brings with disobedience, to show that sin begins with disobedience to the commands of God. The aim to show that sin begins with the disobedience to the commands of God. Uh, and this lesson has somewhat of a historical character and we cannot trace it sin back further than our first parents. However, we do know that the devil is called by the scripture and you'll find in 1 John 3 and 8, a sinner. And sin is the transgression of the law. How far back in eternity Satan first transgressed the law of God, we do not know. At any rate, we know that sin originated with the devil. And we also know its origin in the family of man. The consequence of man's fall are so evident in the human nature that its reality is commonly recognized. The fall of man and Eve 
the fall of Adam and Eve was by deliberate, intentional violation of the divine commandment that God had given. Through the act of eating the forbidden fruit, many have been insignificant. Many have been in although sorry. <laughs> Through the act of eating the forbidden fruit, though the act of eating the forbidden fruit uh, may have been insignificant, yeah, I got it this time, uh, in itself, yet its consequences were of incomparable importance. Their act implied a flagrant rejection of their creator contempt for his good law and a love of things and self more than that of God. Man was not created with a sinful heart. We take note of that. Man was not created with a sinful heart. He came, he came from the hand of God, pure and clean. God cannot sin. So it follows that the wickedness in the world came from an evil personality and the human family was infested by obedience to him. So we see there that God created man upright, pure and sinless. And we understand from scripture that he placed man in the Garden of Eden and there was where he gave man strict in, um, instruction as what to do, to, to dress and keep the garden, uh, and, so, and so forth. And we'll see where man went wrong in disobe disobeying God's word. So man was made sinless and upright. And sin did not originate with God. Sin originated with the devil, and we see how God, he will, we will see how he twisted God's word and caused Eve to, to believe his lie, and she obeyed him through the serpent, and man became sinful because of that and because Adam did not stand up to his responsibility we all were plunged into this sinful um, nature so let's look at first scripture Genesis 2 verse 8 and the Lord God God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed so after God created the sun, moon, stars, and all the elements, and the land, he, created, he, he planted a garden in East Eden, and he put man there for a purpose. And, and there he put the man whom he had formed, okay? Meditation say here, God planted. It is an, ev it is an evidence of great in ignorance for anyone to say that the natural world just came into existence by the process of evolution, leaving the powerful, all-wise, invisible God out. Be sure, God exists, exercised great care in creation, having the welfare of man in mind. After God created the world, then he planted the garden in the area of the world called Eden. As thus we have the Garden of Eden. In this beautiful garden, God planted our place, a man whom he had formed, right? So God placed man in this beautiful garden um, of Eden. And uh, we see here in verse 9, and it continues to say, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. 
So God planted a very beautiful garden and he, um, and, and, it, and life still brings forth the beauty from, you know, that beginning of God's creation. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree, every tree, right? So whatever tree you have out there in your yard, God planted it in the beginning or he um, was the beginning of it. I know scientists have done things over the years to um, create different species or um, to, um, I forget the term you use there, but they can work with the plants to make different types of um, other plants come from that. Okay, but the nature of that plant still is going to be um, more or less in the, the original um, nature of, of the plant, but might look and taste a little different, okay? But out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree also of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So there was a tree there of knowledge of good and evil. And that's the one we're going to be focusing on this morning. Uh, the fruit of this tree was good for food and was pleasant to look at. The fruit within itself had no power to harm the soul of man. It was the disobedience to the commands of God that injured the soul. Okay? Before they ate of the tree, Adam and Eve knew nothing about evil. This one transgression brought upon them and all their offspring sin. Right? So because God told them specific instructions about this tree, they were not supposed to touch, eat of that tree, but it was a pleasant tree to, to look upon. It had looked just as beautiful as any other plant in the garden and was desirable for, for, for them to eat, but God said, do not eat of it. And we need to understand that when God says something, he means what he says. And when we go against what God says, then we are in transgression and in, we have disobeyed him. And there is going to be a consequence of our disobedience to him. Okay. Uh, and we go down in verse 15 and it says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So God created this beautiful garden and he allowed all the beautiful plants to grow and trees, which was good for, for, for food, etc. And he put man there uh, and gave man a responsibility. And the Lord took man and he put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. In other words, he had to maintain the garden because any of us know if you have a garden, if you have a house and you, you're living on that plot of land that that house is built and you have trees around it, what if, what if there is no fruit trees or no um, flower, flower trees or whatever, I'm sure grass is going to grow and bush is going to be around there. And if you don't take care of that and, con and maintain it, it's going to overgrow the, the land and it's going to look unsightly. So God wanted his garden to look beautiful, right? Just like he wants you and, us, you and I to look beautiful. And it's nothing wrong with us taking care of ourselves. This is God's body. We need to take care of ourselves just as he wants us to take care of his garden. So he put man there to, and gave him the responsibility to dress it and to keep it. And listen to this. 
Labor is honorable and not evil. But some people today think work is a sin. At this time, the earth had not been cursed with thorns and thistles. Nevertheless, it was necessary to do some work to keep the garden in order, in order, pruning and keeping um, legitimate things in their proper place. And listen to this. Labor has always been a blessing to mankind. And early in life, its value should be learned by every man. We should, I, I want to just stop, pause here a little bit because this is very important. Uh, we have some people that... <sighs> Don't think that, you know, their children should work. But that's where the impression and the, the, the importance and value of life is started. When you teach those young children, give them responsibilities within the home. If it's only to make their beds, uh, clean the bathroom take out the garbage, um, etc. Give them some responsibility because you are molding them for their future. Don't wait until they get out of school and graduate and now looking for a job and then think that that's going to work normally. No, it's not going to go well because they're going to be frustrated. They're not going to be able to um, take instructions and follow orders because they were not trained in that way. So, labor is honorable and it is not evil. And we need to learn this and practice and teach this to our youngsters early in their lives, okay? So that they will be molded in that um, form that when they get older, they will appreciate life and be more responsible. Okay? Now, Let's move on. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. So God told Adam, dress the garden. But, and the Lord God commanded, you heard that word? Commanded the man, which is Adam, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And take note of that last part of that verse there. For the day that thou should eatest thereof, and this one, thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die. The day that you eat of that fruit, you shall die. God's word. Okay? God's word. Uh, the one law in the garden. God spake no idle words. Let every man know that God means every word he says. So let life be ordered accordingly. Could not God have created man and put him in the lovely garden without this or any other command? He could not carry out his plan, that of having a creation with a free will and, a, and consequently a tried people. God gets glory and pleasure to himself when anyone by appropriation of his power says no to sin. He who says no to sin has defeated and disappointed Satan, right? So we have to understand that we need to shut the devil down by telling him no when he brings um, temptation to us. When he tried to sugarcoat things and make us think, well, it's going to be all right. If there is a command against you doing that, you should tell Satan, no, the Bible says, right? 
or um, I will not obey you. Put him to flight. Shut him down, right? You have the power. God gave you a, a, the, the will, a will in your life and a power to choose. So you don't have to do, we don't have to do everything or anything that Satan tells us to do if we um, will use the power that God has given us. Uh, remember, God is almighty and he is in charge. God created us. He put us here. He created the world. He's in charge. And whatever he says is law. And we as the creators, as the, uh, the, the, um, the creatures, have no right to argue with God. Or, you know, to backchat him, in other words, right? When God said, thou shall, he mean thou shall. When he said thou shall not, he means thou shall not. Okay? So, um, we cannot challenge him and win. We cannot challenge God and win um, by our own standards. Yes, you, you know, we will whine and say, well, why can't we do this? You know, you, you know how we can whine. Okay? But God said, that tree, you shall not touch it. And there are many examples in the Bible going from this experience here forward where God told man not to do certain things, not to touch certain things, and if they did, there would be a consequence. You remember when they were taking the, the Ark of the Covenant back and um, it was just the priests who were supposed to handle the, the covenant, the, the Ark of the Covenant, and this one individual among the, the, the group when they were traveling, the, 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 cover, the ark was tilting and it looked like as if it was going to fall. And he, with his good heart, I would say, tried to support it and, and um, keep it steady. And it was not his place to do that. And because he did so, he perished. Because God said, only the priest was supposed to handle that sacred vessel. Okay, So when God said we are not to do something, he means we are not to do it, regardless of how it might look. Right? In our eyes, we might see it in a different way, but God said, no, you should not. So leave it alone. Okay? Okay, moving on. Um, now Genesis 3 and 1. Here we're going to have something happening here. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now look now, the devil imposed himself into a serpent because there was no other human being on the, on the earth beside Adam and Eve, so he hadn't got into them yet. So he chose a serpent to come to Eve, not to Adam, to Eve, because <laughs> it is a saying said, the weakest link is where the strength of the chain is, right? So obviously Eve was the weaker one, not that she was not strong physically, but I guess emotionally or whatever, she was observed to be the weaker one, okay? So now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, who is Eve, yea, and he started to reason with her. Had God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Satan has never been known to be on the side of right. And if he does appear to be, it is most necessary that we 
very carefully examine the situation. For he is a master at deception and a skillful counterfeiter. Notice his first attack was on the weaker person. Woman is not, however, a weak vessel, but weaker than the man. Satan, by his words, desired to confuse the woman and inject doubt concerning the words of God that he had spoken. Right? You know, women are more curious about things than most men are. So maybe that's why the devil chose her, because the curiosity of the woman. Okay? But let's see what happened afterwards. Uh, and the woman, remember the devil come now reasoning to, to the woman. He's, he had said, he shall not eat of every tree of the garden. That's a question that Satan asked the woman. And the woman answered him. And the woman said unto the serpent, may we, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Right? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But, verse 3, But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said, We shall not eat of it, neither shall we touch it, lest we die. So, Eve understood what God had said, right? Eve understood what God had said. But the curiosity of her mind allowed her to give in to Satan's approach. And the serpent said unto the woman, um, Ye shall not surely die, right? Satan started to reason with her and said, You shall not surely die. God said um, that you were not to touch it because the day you eat of it, you shall die. And now Satan is coming and saying to the woman, You shall not surely die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. And here he goes on now giving the woman a little more appetite towards wanting to gravitate to that fruit. Hear what he tries, hear what he said here. For God doeth know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So you see how he set up the woman? Hmm? He wanted her to understand that God is trying to keep something important from you. He doesn't want you to know more than you know now. He's going to you know, keep you down. Okay? And curiosity, curiosity caused her now to start working that part of her and she became a victim. And the woman, verse 6, and the woman then, and, and when the woman saw, now God told her not to, but now she saw that it was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. So you see, she bite into what the devil was a reasoning with her. Because she wanted to understand more of what God is trying to keep away from her. A curious mind. Okay? So, to, to, I read here again. And a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And that's where the problem came in. It wasn't, well, it was wrong for the, the woman to be reasoning with Satan in, or the serpent because she should have done 
what Jesus did um, and re rebuke him and tell him that God said, right? And leave us alone. But no, she entertained him and she reasoned with him. And he got into her, her, her mind and in her, 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 her emotions and she fell for his bait. And she saw that the tree was good for food and desirable and she took and she did eat. And she also thought it would make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. So that's where the problem was because God told Adam that and God and out of the ground made he the Lord God to grow every tree that was pleasant to the sight and good for food and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord God said unto the man, who was he speaking to? The man. And the Lord God and the Lord and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord, Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So that's where man did not hold up what God had told him. And I'm speaking to, about Adam. Adam disobeyed God. And cause not... Eve disobeyed, yes, but if Adam had not taken, and if he had questioned, and if he had rebuked Eve of what she did, then we probably would not have been in this problem of sin today. Because God created man, and he gave him, it was man who God created first, and he gave him the responsibility to have domain over his creation. He said, name the animals, name the plants, whatever. You are in charge. Name everything in, in the sea. You are in charge. I've invested this authority and power into you. So he had given us men the autonomy of control over his creation. And because we fell by disobeying God, when Adam, when Eve came along with this fruit and he didn't question, he just fell for her bait also and caused us humanity to fall into sin. Okay, so the origin of sin is from there because Adam failed God. Adam did not stand up to the commandments that God had given. Not blaming Eve altogether. She did wrong. But if Adam had done his part, his act would have sanctified her fall and her um, taking, right? I would think. So, but man failed. Anyhow, let's, that's enough for that. Um, let's close off with this, um, these verses here in James 1, 13 through 16. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. Listen to this now. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust or his own desire and entice and when lust had conceived when lust has become well you know what conception means pregnated it becomes a, 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 a thing right when lust had conceived it bringeth forth sin 
right? So we are to be careful how we lust at things because if we keep lusting and we are enticed, we're going to go after it, okay? And when you go after it and you participate in it or of it, you have conceived. You have conceived, right? And it's going to bring death and sin to us, okay? Uh, read that verse again, verse 15. Then when lust had conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin is finished, it bring forth death, spiritual death, okay? Spiritual separation from you and God. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Do not err by obeying the devil. Do not err by, excuse me, giving heed and giving the devil in the, 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 the privilege to entice you. Do not entertain his suggestions and his approach when he comes to you um, with his, uh, his plans and try to reason with you. Use the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Let us draw nigh unto God. Let us learn that. And then resist the devil, and then he will flee. But first, not just only resist the devil, but the most time to use that scripture, resist the devil and he will flee. Yes, but you need to do something before that. Get close to God. The Bible said, draw nigh unto God. When you are close to God, then you have the power to resist the devil and then he will take his flight because God is almighty. God is more is all powerful and he cannot challenge God, okay? And win. So let's draw close to God and we will be overcomers. I must stop there. I trust you have been blessed by the lesson and next Sunday we're going to be studying the power of sin, what sin is does to humanity. God bless you. Have a great week and tune back, tune in again next Sunday for another lesson. Father in heaven, we thank you for the time spent. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your commandments, dear Lord, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit that will give us, dear Lord, the power to live up to the, your commandments, dear Lord, but we need to do our part. We need to let our will be taken over by your Holy Spirit, dear Lord. And we need to learn to draw near to you so that we can resist Satan and be overcomers. So bless us this week, dear Lord. As we go through our challenges, dear Lord, help us to be sensitive of your Holy Spirit and to be able to draw nigh unto you and then be able to resist Satan. So give us an overcoming week and a victorious one. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Have a great week.